I watch episode 20 of Pokemon every year because I watch every episode of Pokemon every year. In episode 20, the ghost of Maiden's Peak, Brock gets catfished by an apparition. Upon finally making it back to the mainland, Brock mopes down bad after his summer drought. The deep pain of his pining imperceivable to his pre-adolescent companions. Whilst lamenting his lack of love, Brock catches feelings for the first woman he sees. Or is it? It's not. As they peruse the promenade, an elderly woman accosts them, forewarning Brock of infatuation, insulting Misty, and ignoring Ash entirely. The vagabonds, also still existing, scour the grounds for spare change. They find a whole penny. With inflation today, that would be worth almost two pennies, which is then confiscated from them by local law enforcement, extorted in exchange for ignoring their obvious gang affiliation. Stealing a single penny has has been their least acrimonious behavior thus far, and yet it was the quickest for the police to intervene upon. The town of Maiden's Peak is celebrating Natsu Matsuri, or as the English dub incorrectly calls it, the end of summer festival. The local legend of the Maiden's Peak is of a maiden on a peak. 2,000 years ago, the love of her life left her to fight the war in Mega City 1. She waited on the peak for him, but he never returned. Her remaining remains turned to stone. The love of her life became the love of her death. She was ghosted. Brock falls even deeper in love with the maiden because she's made out of Brock. Brock's type B. Rock. The allure of the Maiden's mixed media portfolio affects all the men on the island, at least all the men in the main cast. It comes for them in the night, sending out vibes. Pikachu attempts to curb their urges through shock therapy. The unnamed elderly woman re-emerges, enforcing abstinence and offering the sale of what the English dub claims as anti-ghost stickers. Another cut of Western creative license. Another crude interpretation of an entire culture for the sake of no one. This blatant erasure simplifies their significance and obfuscates their authenticity, nullifying their effect. The westernly winds blow the Ofuda away, and the ghost of the maiden sucks them off. Gotta suck them all. Ash, whose irrelevance to this plot allows him some skepticism, uses his Pokédex to reveal the identity of the spirit. Who's that Pokémon? Another plot twist spoiled by that segment. Ghastly, whose accent is just as opaque as its body, was also the elderly woman the whole time. Women over 40 don't exist. They attempt a standard Pokémon battle, but Ghastly don't play like that. Ghastly uses unsanctioned attacks tantamount to attempted murder, making them each face their mortal fears. A mousetrap. A fire extinguisher a regular animal. The Bulbasaur Squirtle tag team are again confronted with their most violent future selves and a commingling of the races. After nearly becoming ghosts themselves, Misty calls on their greatest ally, Jesus of Nazareth. Misty dabbles in blasphemy, but the power of Christ is not very effective. God is as real as the ghost of the maiden. Ghastly complains about being compared to a vampire, but is then easily dispelled by sunlight, which isn't what regular ghost Pokemon are even weak against. Christ rose 2,000 years ago, but the sun rises every day. That timetable matches up, actually. As Ghastly fades from the mortal plane, it advertises its next annual live performance. Keep on that grind. This episode butchers both Eastern and Western religion. It's brazen impiety burning the culturally significant candle at both ends. It is a localization that only offers distance. And the ghost of the maiden was actually real, I guess. Ghastly just stole her identity to exploit tourists. Engaging in further nonspecific cultural activities, Ash ponders the existence of the afterlife and his own ideas of romance. Whilst Brock idles alone, his celibacy still upheld. Unsure of life after love, but certain that there is love after life. Love is dead, but the dead can still love. The only thing that they still feel is the eternal pain of heartbreak. Forever to be continued.